downtown. I learned a lot of stuff, man. There was a lot of stuff that came through that building. And there's only you one way. You, like, Who the hell are you, you? You gotta give some <laughs> hand claps to this, Jay. This is Mr. Andre Harrell up in this building. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm doing very well. Very well. Welcome right, to the VIP. Ready to VIP Saturday night this day. Yeah, we we gonna do it, man. And y'all you know, you, you're one of the architects, so we gotta do it right. All Shit, right you started the VIP. All right, let's get it champagne and bubbly. <laughs> champagne and bubbles, <laughs> baby. You know what it is, man. Now understand, uh, Mr. Harrell, we got probably like 10 million people that listen to us on a Saturday. I don't know if that's kind of good for you. That's but good. That's good, right? That's big. No, I'm glad, man, because we're doing a little bit better than that. We got 30 million people up talk here. Talk that talk. 30 you know million. Jesus Christ. Internationally. You know? Yeah. Jesus Christ. They tune in. All right. So, so you know, maybe. So, if I change my name right here on the air right now, everybody be call yeah, me something yeah. different hey, tomorrow. Hey, look, please don't do that. You know, the blogs. It's going to be, yeah. gonna be tomorrow. It's going to be like the next minute. You know, the blogs. They right on it. We moving. <laughs> okay. So, like the 20 million people, could you introduce yourself to 30 million. 30, 30, 30 million. 30 million. But the 20 million that might not know who Mr. Harrell is. I doubt it very oh. highly, but they, they still should know. Yeah. Thoroughly. So, he could, like, it's say pedigree. a little bit, a little bit. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. Just. Brush All right. show this real All quick. Right. I'm the founder of Uptown Records. Uh, I'm the producer of New York Undercover. I'm producer of Holly Berry's first lead movie, Strictly Business. I'm producer yes. of Jessica Alba's first lead movie, Honey. And I started Ghetto Fabulous. Mm-hmm. Yes. That, I mean, that, <laughs> just that for a couple of things. Lifestyle. And, and we're talking about a big conference that's just grew. To, as everybody's there I'm seeing a couple of people That's like a Big right now For this conference Revolt Revolt Music Conference October 13th To the 16th Down in Miami Where music meets Social media Meets Technology To move to innovation And this is our third year And one of our Keynote speakers Is a really good friend of mine Is Leo Cohen From 300 Records wow. And then we got somebody Who's probably a real good friend Of everybody Doing um, an Axe Khaled session Mm -hmm. DJ Khaled was you going to talk to him about how did you go from doing what you were doing to be the topic of everyday discussion on social media Mm -hmm. so he'll be talking about that do do you think that would be hard for him to have that conversation because that that was bigger than life it almost seemed like it took on a life of his own with with Khaled on his Snapchat and to be able to do that Q&A you think he'll be able to answer that in that allotted time that y'all give him you mean you mean he needs a full day or three hundred sixty five days because he, he, he's always explaining always, something. how yes. to be moisturized. <laughs> cocoa butter is <laughs> key. Yeah. Cocoa butter is key. Yeah. Like, I think he can only give you a snapshot of what it might take to do what he did, but I think it'll be worthwhile. Good, good. And this is going to be our third year doing this, right? This will be our third year. Um, and after doing it for two years. It is really the only serious music conference out that everybody attends. When I say everybody, I mean presidents mm-hmm. of record companies and chairmen and presidents of tech companies, right. innovators who make new things. So it feels come almost like um, a TED, TED conference mm-hmm. meets the music business. What I like about it is um, I remember back in the day, like you used to have like your Jack, your Jack the Rappers, mm-hmm. your How Can I Be Downs, but it's like you took the, this Revolt Music Conference, similar to basketball, because we've all played yeah. basketball, and how you used to see the OG that would have all these moves, and you take these moves, and then you make it better, and you mm-hmm. add your own and keep on growing it. Mm-hmm. It seems like this is where Revolt Music Conference is going. We LeBron James did. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get in the way of that fucking that no, layup, it, Jay. You, you don't, don't want to get in the way. Get in the way of it at all. But why? Why is it so <laughs> important for our artists and just a person that's starting a business to go to the Revolt Conference? I think it's important um, because the music business is changing drastically. Uh, drastically, every day we don't know exactly who's king or who will be king. Um, is it going to be the music companies? Is it going to be technology companies? Or is it just going to be Apple? Yes. Oh. Um, so the more we discuss it, the more people can start to gear their career toward the future. Because the way it works is you got to have one eye on yesterday to know your history. An mm-hmm. eye, excuse me, an eye on today, but you always have to have an eye on the future. Mm-hmm. And especially in the music business now, because the music business, in terms of where the income is coming from, yes. is changing drastically. Streaming might become that much more important uh, than regular terrestrial radio. Um, There are so many just new things that constantly unveil, and we don't want to be last to know, so I want to put us in first position. And I think this conference has allowed me to do that. 
I'm glad you brought up the the music business because there is something that, um, especially nowadays, something that you is. I want to say Uptown almost made this blueprint where your A and R. Shout out to you know Tim Dog, Butt Naked Tim Dog, um, of course you know Sean Puffy, Combs. You know like mm-hmm. you guys built a lot of careers from the ground up, and now the business is like you know you could be an overnight star. Um, literally within months and stuff. What do you, with, with this conference, do you are you taking people or uh, kind of like giving them pathways and kind of showing them the routes to be successful? Uh, the conference goes all the way back to when I used to attend conferences. I used to attend Jack the Rapper. Mm-hmm. I used to attend BRE. At BRE, Sydney Miller used to do that black radio exclusive. I met Joe Busby. And mm-hmm. at that conference, I made the inroad to Joe Busby that later on turned into me getting a deal with Joe Busby and starting Uptown Records. So the conference is like not the underground railroad, but the overground railroad to success. Mm-hmm. Like you, It's advertised. You can see it. If you don't come, it's your own fault. Because the networking possibilities, like yeah. to meet the right person who's got that heat that could put you into the sun, mm-hmm. it's available to you. If your time is right, if your rap is right, it's available, and it, even if if your timing's wrong and you're just listening at one of the panels, and they're talking about what it takes to make a superstar, like in the A and R panel, yeah, something might strike you a certain kind of way and make you say, "This is what I want to do," or "This artist I've been working with, this is what he's missing," or "This is exactly what he has," mm. and take that opportunity to go further with it and make something happen. Yeah. Knowledge, very knowledge. I don't even want to know his billable hours. I'm just saying. Get this knowledge like, like while you me, can. <laughs> but like for me, um, Impact. Impact, Joe, I made my deal, uh, Uptown Records, by going to BRE and meeting Joe Busby. That's Black Radio Exclusive Conference. That mm-hmm. was in L.A. Then at Impact in Atlantic City would be where I always launched my artists. Like Heavy D would perform there. Christopher Williams would perform there. Because of these conferences, you get a serious amount of national radio people, a serious amount of presidents, these are the people that keep you or make you keep you from success or make you successful. So once you knock them down, you're on your way. So when you have everybody in one place, yeah, the shot is heard around the world. So I tried to give you that again. I tried to make it so artists could come out there and perform um, and be seen by people. Not only artists, we have a um, um, we have an opportunity called Be Heard where people could come, mail in their tape, and myself, um, Cool and Dre, uh, what's my man's name? Brian Michael Cox and Sean Garrett. We'll all be there, and we're going to pick one person out of maybe three, 400 people. For five hours, people will be there. We take that one person who's the best, give them an opportunity to perform on Revolt Live on Sessions and get their thing going on. Because wow. what we have found out is a lot of people come to the panels and they want to ask, they don't want to ask questions. So the moderator would say, well, <laughs> what question you want to ask? He said, well, I really want to spit 16 bars. Can I do that? Mm. And then they don't want to spit. So we, we, because we see artists trying to get on, we want to create an environment where it's really professional and they can get on. So when you when you have these artists and they sit down and stuff, and obviously there's a lot of different people who are going to be speaking at the Revolt Music Conference. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the key thing? Is it something for people to just get money, or is it for you to extend whatever your talent is throughout the years? Well, superstars tend to appreciate the journey, like the learning how to make a record, learning how to write a record, learning how to write a whole hit album. Like if you don't appreciate the practice, you're not going to be great in the real game. Like if you're just doing it, like. I want to be famous, and if I could just take this loop, it's a hot loop, and spit 16 on it and get it going, that's probably as far as you're going to go. Like, Nas is a student of hip-hop. Jay-Z practices. He changes. Drake changes. Kanye practices and innovates. Not one of his albums are the same. They're all different. I don't think um, in the era of being famous that the kids who are calling themselves artists are looking at it as long-term as the artists of the day. I agree. The artists of the day took a page from the artists of yesterday, and they do want to build a catalog 
and they do want to go from decade to decade to decade. Matter of fact, the artists of yesterday, the artists of the 90s, they not never letting the mic go. Like once they got hot, they ain't put it down yet. They not trying to make room for nobody. <laughs> Mm -hmm. At all. It ain't like, okay, I'll let you come. No. I yeah. understand exactly what this is. This heat right here, this energy right here is like no other. Mm -hmm. And I'm not letting it go. They're going to have to carry me out of here. What we were taught was that, you know, you had to get, you had to bump somebody off. You know what I'm saying? You had to bump somebody off that chart. Off right. At the time, if you were buying CDs or yeah. tapes, that you had to bump somebody off that shelf. To get a spot. To get that spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're right. I mean, the artists back then, or even now, the night nineties, two thousand, they're like, no, nah, I'm not letting that go. Well, there's, there's I'm a, a couple. Stay, there's keep a couple. This. There's a couple of young people that are acting like I ain't letting it go. Drake is acting like I ain't yeah. letting it go. <laughs> he's yeah. not he, he, really. He's acting like he's from the like from another yeah, era. Yeah. Can we get into some music? Yeah, man. Sure. I, you know, I'm curious. Uh, what's uh, this uh, guy listening to? Yeah. What's your favorite <laughs> record right now? Jesus Christ. What's my favorite record right now? It's gonna have to be. I uh, I kind of hate to say it. It's gonna have to be one of Drake's records. There's <laughs> <laughs> no there's no need to hate to say it. He got hey. five of them, man. So let's get into a Drake record. VIP Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to ask. Now on mm -hmm. top of the game, what artists that you regret not signing? <sighs> there wasn't very many. a couple. It was a couple. Come on. And, and to be honest, when you hot, when you hot. They not getting away unless you want them not to sign them. Like, I, there's nothing that got away. Nothing. Not one person that you was like, ah. I wish I could tell you one big hit that got away. I can't tell you none. None? None. Wow. <laughs> they, they had it. They, they, I like, when I was chasing them down, he, who was going to chase with me? Quincy? Quincy Jones couldn't chase with me. Russ couldn't chase with me. I did something different. If you wanted to be a luxury urban brand, there was one place to go for that. If you wanted your swag on 1,000, yeah. there was one place to go for that. Father MC, Queens too, B. Yeah, but you know, he got Far high over a place called Uptown. It, it was good, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. It was <laughs> yeah. definitely good, man. They gave me a lot of they gave me a lot of grief for Father MC, but yeah. I like Father MC. Yo, well, I mean, what was the grief, though? The, Father MC was the poor man Big Daddy K. So so they was yeah. like so they was like yo man Father MC is not hot I used to say his records all over the radio you see all these girls screaming what you what you talking about and who you represent because I don't see nobody standing there with you plus people need to be thankful for Father MC I mean you pop them you pop Joe to see off with him with you know yep. treat him and then um, what was the other thing with Mary mm -hmm. uh, you know Father has some yeah, records he has man. Some hits. Father has some records yeah. I, I, Personally, I don't think I, I never compared them to. I thought it was more of you know more follows more into the girls real real gritty. I just never hear a gritty record from Father MC. Never, but never. I think you're not. We're talking about Big Daddy King past you know the the, the flat tops. And nah, the brown nah, scale, nah, 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 nah. Not talking about that. We're talking about when he started dressing in suits and doing stuff with um the not Funkadelics. What was it? Was it the Teddy group, Riley? Man? No, with Teddy Riley, he smoothed them out crazy. Where it was like whoa. What, what, what's this? And I, I, that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about Raw Kane at all. No. Not at all. I was okay. talking about when he got fly. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that was it. Other than that, Father MC was a smash. Smash. I had a lot, a hits, lot of fun. A lot, a lot of hits. For me? And he introduced, like he said, he introduced Mary J. Blige and Joe to C. Yeah. He, he was a team player. And he went for it, too. Like, let's, let's you hear that, right? In. That's Queens, brother. Yeah, yeah, Mary up there on the stage. <laughs> going Queen. crazy like this, yeah, man. It's yeah. like me and Russell right here. That's Queens, huh? <laughs> That's yeah. Queens, baby. You know, yeah. Uptown and Queens, we all the same, man. You know, we both had the same swag. Bro. So down. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So down, I don't, I don't, so I don't down. quite think so. Brooklyn and Queens more had the same no, swag. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. We Kinda. Agree. No. Yeah. Too rough. Brooklyn's too rough. Nah, I mean, you know, y'all met in the middle. Was that y'all had yeah. the Brooklyn Queens well, day? Y'all was together, man. Y'all was together. This is the, this is the, this is the father of swag right here. So I'm gonna be respectful. <laughs> so you think you think Queens got more in common with Harlem than Brooklyn? Yeah, definitely the cars. Come on, no. the, the the game. The, mm -hmm. Come on, we can we can go. We can go. Mm -hmm. The we, game. The game. The 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 money game. Everything. You know, we could go back. Come on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Queens is cool. 
Yeah, Queens is definitely cool, man. Y'all have some groundbreaking stuff out there, but it's not Harlem. It's All not right. <laughs> it's not. We, we got RJ Harrell in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Revolt Conference. Revolt Music Conference coming up, man. Right. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to ask you this question. I think you've answered it in but so many different ways, but I, I said if I ever get a chance to sit down with Andre Harrell again, I'm going to ask him this face-to-face. Did you ever regret, like, first, did you see, when talking about Puff real quick and Uptown and people who, alumni who came out of mm-hmm. there, when when you let up when you let Puff go, did you ever regret that? No, I didn't regret that because I was in a bad situation. I wanted to let Puff have his own office space. He was getting bigger. I wanted to maintain the relationship, but I didn't want to have to constantly tell him what to do. He was bigger than that, so I was starting to get heat from MCA to get everybody so called in line. And one of the ways they meant that when Biggie first made his album, the president's uh, secretary saw it, and she saw the lyrics and said, told the president, we can't put this out. And so the president called me and said, you gotta tell him, we gotta change this, we can't put this out. Was Now was that the song for? Um, the Biggie album. For the album, Ready to one. Die. Ready to Die. Okay. And I was sitting there saying, I'm not going to crush the voice of a new generation, that's not what I'm here to do. So. MCA, the parent company, was really trying to put me in a very uncomfortable situation with young black America. And I'm looking at Puff like, Puff, I see a million people standing behind you that want to do it your way. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't there to stop it. I was there to empower it. So when it came to the time that we needed to part ways, I knew that me parting ways for him was going to make him rich because he was the only one that I taught all this to. Mm. Well, that's crazy. (laughs) <laughs> wow, man. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah, did did what was the conversation like? I, I'm assuming like you know we're young, so at the time you're like, man, this is fucked up, whatever, whatever. What was the conversation like afterwards? Because you guys have walked, you, it, the you you've been there for the, him the, the, through the years. Conversation afterwards, you still on payroll? Mm. You still gonna do Mary J. Blige? And you getting ready to go out and look for a new deal? Why are you on payroll? And you got artists? You gonna get rich? Mm-hmm. Just relax for a second. Did he understand? quickly <laughs> when i was still on payroll <laughs> oh, so just seeing that you heard uh, that you heard the biggie album when biggie was um coming about when puff introduced you like could you listen to his music did you feel like he was just gonna be the star he was biggie at that point when you heard the i music? didn't know biggie was gonna c- become my favorite rap star ever no yeah. i knew he had talent i knew yeah. he was good but he became my favorite Rap star of all time. What record was that when you was like, man? Black and ugly as ever. However, yeah. Gucci yeah. down to the socks, rings filled with rocks. And I creepy, I I creepy and a girl's TP and my Mitsubishi. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Truth. Jesus can, Christ. Can we get into that record? Let's do it, man. Let's can, get into I it. want you to play one more song B- for me. Biggie, Biggie, Biggie what's, was like, what's your record? The Marvin Gaye of hip hop to me. That's Not, how melodic and, and sexy ghetto yeah. his shit was. Smooth. Mr. Harrell, I want you to give him some quizzes because he's he's from Bronx, you know. Because you didn't mention the Bronx, you know. what I'm saying you said Queens and mm-hmm. Uptown. We we kind of you know mesh in Brooklyn, but you didn't mention the Bronx. So could you quiz him? I want to I want to I want you to name three Uptown records that I can play right now. Three Uptown records. Yes. Um, like I definitely want to play Treat Him uh, with Father MC. Okay, definitely got to. I just that said that though. Um, I, well, I said it earlier in our interview. Um, let me see what else. What you got to play a little Sean joint. Hickey's on my neck. You gotta okay, do that okay. Joint. He's getting warm, right? Because um, he's, he's doing the beat. Okay, okay. <laughs> and what's another joint? Um, I want you to play. I want to know if you. I, I think you got this too. Jodeci, the Jeep remix, Raekwon, the Chef. Along with Ghostface. Okay, and I'm gonna add one. I'm gonna add one record because I feel like this is a Queens record. Yeah, do but it. it's from Uptown. Jeff Red. Ah, you told me you that know that's a Queens record right there. That's a super be. blend record thought, for y'all, I man. I thought that was. I thought that was an Uptown record. Nah, man. I don't mean my <laughs> label. I, I I just mean the parties, the Harlem parties. We got you guys. I'm gonna show you. I some don't pictures. know. Harlem doesn't embrace that record like that when I play it. Queens does. Well, maybe you. Oh, was now in a different party. Now. Yeah. Now. Classical timeless though. Okay, it's true. It's true. We embraced it back in my era. I'm gonna show you this photo book I got. My mom got. Don't worry about. It. We got you. All right, let's get into a <laughs> VIP Saturdays. <laughs> yeah. Can I jump into this real quick? Yeah. We got all the success of Empire. We got all the success of Power. But well, we know where it started from. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. New York undercover. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Malik Yoba. Yep. You know what I mean? Shout out to Malik Yoba. He wasn't. He. It, I. I love Malik Yoba, but the lips, man, was it was was bugging me sometimes. You know what I <laughs> mean? I don't know if that was a part of the script. You know what I mean? The I was thing. mad when they killed Malik Yoba and Empire. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he would do. I thought. I thought he made it rugged. That was, they just rented him for a, a, a season. Uh, uh, they uh, rented him. Yeah, that they did Malik it. Yoba bad. Man. They did him that was dirty. his man, yo. His man. I was like, God yeah, but he got he got it back. He's on the TV Malik, series. Malik, Malik kept the gutter involved. Yeah, like without him, it became more show business. Yeah, he knew all that shit on him too. Now, strictly business. Mm-hmm. Now, will you jump back into into this um, TV um, network? No doubt. No we, doubt, we, we need we need Andre Rell production. No, man. no, no doubt. I'm, don't worry, I'll be back before you know it. And how did you discover Holly Berry? Yeah, please tell me that. Lord one. have mercy, man. There's a uh, lot of guys right that. now. They lining up to hear this shit. Um, I discovered her when she submitted her audition tape. It just came mm-hmm. in. It came in, and um, the other producers of the film said because we had started shooting. Wow, we had started shooting with AJ Johnson, mm-hmm. and we were like in our third day. And the producers came in and said, you're going to have to see this. I was like, what y'all talking about? This girl auditioned for Lee. I was like, yo, we three days shooting. Watch this. Mm. And they put Holly Berry and her haircut up there. Next thing you knew is you, you see me and AJ with my arm around AJ like, it's not going to work out, honey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's uh, not going to work out. Don't work worry out. about it, man. She had the haircut, though. She had the short haircut. She had the short haircut. She had the Holly Berry brand face. Is- she was, she, she was Holly Berry. Yeah, man. Just like they say, Holly Berry. <laughs> she was incredible. She was if you look at her Instagram, she's incredible right now. Yeah, she's still doing her thing. Now, are we going to get an Uptown Records movie? I hope you get even more than that. I don't want to let the cat out the bag. But yeah, I, I hope Some so stories, too. man. I hope I'm, so, too. We're working on that. I will tell you this. You will get an Uptown book. You're mm-hmm. getting that next year. Okay. I'm working on that right now. I'm just about done. You'll get that next year. But then you, you will get some more in a big way of the stories of what happened, who was there. Come on, Mary. The, I, I can see a Jodeci movie. I can see a Mary J. Blige movie, a Jodeci movie. Like, come on, a whole Jodeci movie. He could it, he could do it. It's almost like the Marvel Universe, man, because each group had their own shit going yeah, it on. Had a had their own storyline. And you could bring them all in later, 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 what's and tie dude, it all what's together. What's the dude who wrote the Marvel stuff? What's the Stan name? Lee. Yeah, I'm like Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you have to swag it, Stan Lee. Oh, man. So, uh, so we, we we could look forward to a movie. You're gonna. It's it's probably gonna be more than that. It's probably gonna be more than that. It probably be something you see every week. Well, look, I'm putting wow. my I'm putting my two cents in right now. If that happens and when it happens, I'm not even gonna say. He yet. said he wants to play I'll be sure. I, I don't know how how to figure it out. I don't know how to grab it. Jay is Ready from, to G- put the flat top on him. Or Jay something. is from quick. You know, you you could do that now too. I saw this shit on Instagram. You could do that. But when you when you do have that, please make sure you come back to the VIP, man. Where okay. you're, you're always it. welcome here. This this is a reserved seat for you. Okay, Cause I you, like that. You, you pretty much curated and cultured everything that we've been doing this in this VIP. This is Mr. VIP. Harrell, man. Come yeah. on, I learned my swag from Queens, but I learned my swag from Uptown, man. All right, all right. You know we got that on all tape. Right. Oh, yeah, we got I, it on tape. We, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm that's a good thing. That's, that's a good thing for him to heavy say. Heavy D, come on, man. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm doing a 90s party, man. I got to get that Coca-Cola. Oh, that's right, um, that's I got to get right, that Coca-Cola right. shirt. Come on. When are you doing a 90s party? Um, For Halloween. You know what I mean? I got to always bring it back. Before you leave, now, you know, the Bad Boy reunion. Mm-hmm. Now, are you are you proud of that? That because I feel like our older artists are not getting the, the just do. We get now we getting arenas. Thank you, Puff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I saw you. I uh, was at the one of the ball clays. You was around. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. A lot of Ciroc was flowing. Mm-hmm. But do you feel like it should be some more things like this? Do we, are we going to get an Uptown Records tour? Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. I can't tell you if it's sure because it's right now it's just talk. But yeah, I think that. Um, those artists from that time period are a very magical group of people, and and the fans still want to see them. Like I know I want to see Missy Elliott. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many of those artists we want to see. I want to see Darnell Jones say say what say what say what. Wow. Mm-hmm. I want to see all of that. I want to relive that two step era, yes. one more again. Yeah. And I think when you go see Puff and the Bad Boy Family, it it brings you back to the height of that era. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think he's giving a really good show. And I think it's opened the door for more people to come and do that. 
Well, thank you for coming out, Mr. Harrell. Absolutely. My pleasure. You know, I, I, I love everything you did. You, you, you know, you said Queens wasn't that swaggy, but we're here, baby. No doubt. <laughs> my, my best friend is from Queens, Russell Simmons. Russ, what up? And me and him debate Queens and Harlem all. We debated it for 30 years. Yeah. Wow. And it's still going. <laughs> Let's get it. VIP Saturdays. Yeah. That was dope. Appreciate it. That was dope. Y'all are dope. Yeah, y'all.